All right, in this video, we are gonna start our coverage of endocrine system medications. If you are following along with cards, I'm on card 99 which covers insulin. And there's a lot to talk about when it comes to insulin. So this video will be dedicated to just insulin. Insulin can be used by both type one and type two diabetic patients. When we get into oral anti-diabetic medications, those are just for type two diabetic patients. There are four types of insulin to be familiar with. We have rapid acting, short acting, intermediate acting, as well as long acting. All right, so let's start with our rapid acting insulins, which include insulin Lispro, or Humalog, as well as insulin Aspart, or Novalog. These medications have a very rapid onset, so onset's gonna be 15 minutes, peak is gonna happen around an hour, and duration occurs around two to four hours. In terms of how I remember that these insulins that end in log are rapid acting as I think of a log rolling rapidly down a hill. If you're gonna give a patient a rapid acting insulin, you wanna make sure their meal tray is right in front of them to prevent hypoglycemia. All right, let's talk about short acting insulins, which include regular insulin, which is Humulin R or Novolin R. These medications have a slightly longer onset of action, so onset is about 30 minutes, peak occurs around two to three hours, and duration occurs between three and six hours. If you're gonna give a patient some regular insulin, you wanna make sure those meal trays are at least on the floor. It doesn't necessarily need to be in front of the patient, but you need to make sure that meal is going to be delivered fairly soon, okay? So we don't end up with hypoglycemia. Then we have our intermediate acting insulin, which is NPH. So NPH has an onset of two to four hours. It has a peak between four and 12 hours and a duration between 12 and 18 hours. So the way I remember NPH is that Neil Patrick Harris, who's a famous actor, his initials are NPH. And let's say that Neil Patrick Harris, he is of intermediate height and he's a very hardworking actor. So if you call him, he will be on set between two to four hours. He comes very quickly and he stays a pretty long time too. He will stay up to 18 hours because he's so hardworking. Okay, and then lastly, we have our long acting insulins, which include insulin glargine, which is Lantus, or insulin detamir which is Levomir. These medications have an onset between three and four hours. There is no peak with these, with these medications and the duration is about 24 hours. So the way I remember that insulin glargine is long acting, I think of a comfy pair of jeans and they're so comfy that I want to wear them for 24 hours. Okay, let's talk about some important key points when it comes to insulin administration. When you're administering insulin, you want to make sure that you rotate sites to help prevent lipohypertrophy, which is the scar tissue you get with if you inject that insulin in the same spot over and over again. Also, the key adverse effect with insulin is hypoglycemia. So if we bring down our sugar levels too low, we can end up with signs and symptoms such as tachycardia, diaphoresis, shakiness, headache, and weakness. So we're definitely gonna want to monitor our patient for those signs and symptoms and also make them aware of those signs and symptoms as well when they discharge from the hospital. Other teaching, your patient may need extra um, doses of insulin during times of illness or stress. They definitely should not skip their insulin when they're sick. They actually might need a little higher dose in order to adequately control their blood sugar levels. If your patient does experience hypoglycemia and they are fully conscious, then you can provide them with um, like some orange juice or milk, basically something that contains about 15 grams of glucose. So this could be like four ounces of juice or about eight ounces of milk. 
If your patient is not fully conscious, then it is not safe to, you know, give them orange juice to drink. You will need to administer glucagon, which we will be covering in a future video here. Then if you are trying to mix insulins, like if you are mixing a short acting insulin with say an intermediate insulin, such as NPH, you always want to draw up clear before cloudy. So how this works is, is you're going to inject air into the cloudy insulin. Okay. Remove your needle, inject air into the clear shorter acting insulin. Don't remove your needle, draw up your short acting insulin, which is your clear insulin, and then come back over here and draw up your cloudy insulin. So those are the steps. We're drawing up the clear before the cloudy. Um, another tip for remembering what you draw up first is to think of registered nurse or RN. You're drawing up regular before drawing up NPH. So for insulin suspensions, you wanna make sure you gently rotate the vial before administration. And if a short acting insulin looks cloudy or discolored, you're going to want to dispose of it. So that is it for insulin. I know it's a lot of information. We will get into oral anti-diabetic medications in my next video. Thanks so much for watching.